the Hot Sauce Cigar Box Guitar Kitchen Cigar Box Fiddle Part 2.
Christmas. Um, yeah, and so like I said, dude, CB Giddy sends just I, I just I just put the order in like a couple days, like two days ago, and it's already here. So exciting. Um, I've gone through. I've gone through the manual a little bit. Uh, this. I'm pretty much just going to do what this says to do. Like Nick, this guy, Nick, how do you pronounce his last name? Lance, Lanciano, Nick Lanciano. This guy is super cool. Whenever I've had a, like any issues through the years, it's not like major issues, but like, you know, every once in a while something happens in the shipping process or whatever. This guy right here has always been so kind in the emails and fixing any issues. So I'm excited and I'm hyped for this dude. I'm hyped to, to I pawed through here real quick. And um, you know, I can kind of riff on a theme with the cigar box guitars, but here, dude, I'm not really gonna I'm just gonna follow this book. It just so happens I have this as I was looking for a box. <clears throat> I have one of these boxes he has. Now I use these primarily for um license plate guitars, but I've got two of these. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna follow this guy's lead and um and get at it to see what happens here. So I'm gonna get tidied up down here, get the parts kind of laid out. I was waiting for the that bow. Yeah, this is exciting, dude. When the box when the box came, I was wondering why the box was so big because normally normally. If you like you can order a bunch of stuff and you'll be amazed how much stuff they can cram in these little um, these little bags but that I had like the big box and that's what it was it was this cool um, this cool the cool bow do you remember when Jimmy Page remember back in the day when Jimmy Page would take this with Led Zeppelin and play the um, some of those songs you know I'm not I'm, I'm not like a mega Led Zeppelin fan or anything. I mean, I know, the, and I know those all the songs that you know, but I do remember Jimmy Page doing something with this. But dude, the, the craftsmanship of this thing, for you know, is good, dude. I mean, it's like wow. This does not feel cheesy, chintzy, or whatever. It feels like nice. It feels like good. <laughs> so as we begin the how I build a cigar box fiddle with Nick Lanciano. I'm excited. So let me just read you something real quick before we get started here. Because this, this is a lot like what I was doing over here. Sawing a tune on my newly finished cigar box fiddle. So here, here's my dude in, in his workshop. That's cool, man. Look at him getting it. Introduction. The violin has, a, has long enjoyed a reputation as a difficult instrument to learn, let alone master. When I first approached building one of my own out of a cigar box, I did so with trepidation. I bought all the parts and then convinced myself that inspiration would strike. So did I. Told you ordering stuff off CB Giddy is addicting. Flash forward by a year and a half with the parts still sitting there untouched until finally one day I decided that I had talk, talked about it enough and dove right in. The punch fiddle that resulted was not necessarily a failure, but I learned a lot from it and that experience made it much easier to try again. So when Ben Giddy Baker, owner of CB Giddy Crafter Supply, pulled the metaphorical sheet, sheet off the table of a new line of violin parts, I knew it was my chance. Let me make a disclaimer here and now. This is important. This is what really inspired me. I read this, I read this to, my, um, to my little girls as we're all learning in life, you know. Let me make a disclaimer here and now. <laughs> Let me make a disclaimer here and now, folks. There was certainly a great deal of full-hearted, full-hearty yet gleeful nosedives and missteps during this build. Even with that, having the experience of my first attempt made this build much easier made this build a much more fulfilling, less stressful process. A special shout out goes a special shout out goes to homemade instrument guru Jim Morris 
who was ready to answer questions both times and provided me with my first set of strings and bow. Thank you, Master Ben Benjota. The instrument I created, which I will show you in this guide, is a gorgeous sounding, rustic looking fiddle. Once I heard it sing, my mind was on to the next project. The writing of this guide so I could so I could share my experience with the community of homemade instrument builders. The following article breaks down the steps I took into sections that may or may not be that may or may not be entirely chronological. However, it'll make sense in the context they are shown. So let's get to it. Oh, well, so this this is the next part I wanted to read here. Intro to the box. As noted above. What I'll be showing you is actually the second cigar box fiddle I've built. The first, shown in the middle above, didn't quite work out. He's referring to this one right here, the, the punch box. Here's a real uh, fiddle, and this is the one he's referring to. Going to the next one. The box, the box was not long enough to properly accommodate the full 13 inch scale length, bringing the tailpiece the tailpiece much too close to where the bridge is supposed to go. I didn't quite give up, but it was a few months of poking around it, around at it until I managed a fix that seemed to work. If you look closely at the photo above, you'll see where I added a few pieces of scrap wood to the end of the box to pad the length and move the tailpiece back. While it has a certain make-do sort of charm, it wasn't quite a perfect solution. Eventually, I might go back and truly finished that first attempt. But in the meantime, I could not wait to start the new one. All right, so this, 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 this next line is what I read to my kids and, and to myself and then to you, know, to you to hopefully encourage you. If you decide to build your own fiddle or other homemade instrument, always remember making mistakes and learning from them is part of the do-it-yourself process. Sometimes what you end up with is better and more creative than it would have been if you had never made the mistakes to begin with. So relax, don't worry, dive in. If you're having fun, you're doing it right. Boom. Hot sauce cigar box guitar kitchen, first fiddle, using the book by Nick Lanciano, How I Built a Cigar Box Fiddle. So we're just gonna go right through here, dude. Unless I completely change my mind and use the Warhawk. <laughs> it's cl it's it's close to the same size. I had I kinda had my heart kinda had my heart to use this one. Um so I don't know, we'll see, dude. You know, we always wanna riff on a thing, but I you know this is the box. It's about the same size. I'm just gonna go with my dude, but I'm so tempted to use this box. We'll see, dude. You never know. Stay tuned. Keep oil in your lamps, my friends. Watch and pray. And yo, little sneaky note. One of the uh, benefits, if you, when you're ordering CB Giddy, this is where he gets you. So he's a Mark, Ben, Ben, what's his name? Ben, Ben Baker, Ben Giddy Baker. Ben Giddy Baker, old quarter hour. Um, when you order certain, like when you're ordering stuff, if you get to like, a, if you spend 50 bucks or 75 bucks or a hundred bucks or 150, you get these certain, like, um, you can get free rewards. And so this was the reward that I got, um, from spending, I think, um, what was it, like a hundred bucks. You get like, I chose the little blue cups, which I'm hyped about. And as I mentioned before, going into the new year. I'm, we're gonna shelf this right now because we're gonna we're gonna focus on the fiddle. But this is the new year project that I had discussed earlier, the plans that I'm working on for a series of three for the new year, and um, I got just quite simply just some more tuners, real simple ones, the six piece chrome open gear tuners, three left, three right. The three left, three right just gives you options, you know, for your tuners as opposed to just getting them all in line because I don't know what I'm going to do yet. So I got some of those. 
I got some of these bone nut blanks to go with the under saddle these guys I was I was actually hyped when I got these because because bro like I literally spent like two hours trying to think this thing through so I, I wanted to make this order you know you never know when the last time we're gonna be able to order stuff is the world the way it is I don't know we'll see I don't want to be all gloomy and doomy but I'm gonna stop reading the Daily Crow but these blanks would go in here like this you know, this is kind of guitar 101, acoustic guitar 101. Uh, bone, if you, if you hear it, it's, it's very, very, it transfers sound real good. So I got, I got a 12 pack of these. I got them longer so I could shape them down if I need to. So I, when I opened the box up, I was like, did I order these things or not? And I did, and I was like, yay. So I got these for those. I got two more of these three-way switches because I have one over here. And this is the way I'm going to facilitate um, switching between the, the monorail, the piezo disc, and that, those, um, the rod piezos. So, yay. That makes me happy, dude. And I got some of these Audio Taper Borns potentiometers. I looked up on the EVH on the Wolfgang series, they, they use, I don't know if they use this pot, but they use this brand. And finally, here's, I was hyped about this. Side note, dude, don't ever lose these things. I'm trying to tell you, dude, you can't, good luck going to Lowe's, Home Depot, or your, or Ace Hardware and finding this screw. I, I've lost these in the past, and, um, I've actually had to go to Stuart McDonald to, to find these screws. So now I'm all paranoid about making sure I hang on to these. But yo, man, I got three of these. I've never used these before. That's another thing, dude, when you're building CB, if you get into this thing, dude, you build, like you use like certain pickups and you get used to how they, how they get installed and how they sound and all that. I haven't used these ones yet, man. I'm excited about these, to tell you the truth. These monorails, dude, look, boom. They, they call them like the pawn shop monorail that way you don't have to worry about the pots all the uh the strings all lining up correctly they'll just do their own thing so i'm excited about these so stay tuned i'm not sure when i'm, I'm probably not going to start those until the new year which is you know a couple of weeks away but so we'll keep everything organized here in the um cb giddy uh the free the free um rewards for spending with certain all right so enough uh babble Let's get to it. We're gonna um, just go through the book one at a time and um, try to get this fiddle built before. It'd be kind of cool to me to like end 2023. What would, what would uh, Ted Nugent call uh, 2023? Cluster bomb? No, I don't think he uses the word cluster bomb. Ted Nugent calls it something else. <laughs> uh, cluster fiddle <laughs> it'd be funny it'd be fun to end cluster fiddle 2023 with a nice fiddle and then uh, go into the new year with the three builds so uh, you know this video probably is already going to be 20 minutes long and I haven't even done anything so we'll just call this one part two part one was the prelude when I was working on the, the lyrics for um, waiting for these parts to get here this would be part two, unboxing it, and then uh, shouting out uh, Nick, you know, letting him know that I'm hyped about doing this. And um, again, Merry Christmas. You know, I hate, I hate to date these videos, but you know, whatever. So Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, end of 2023, going into 2024, and um, peace. Do you know why the flag's upside down? It's not, it's not meant as a disrespect to our veterans. My dad's a veteran. My dad would have, my dad would have agreed with this 100 and 200,000, 25%. Broken arrow. Moving right along. Got these F holes just about cleaned up. Uh, carved them out with a Dremel. Well, traced it with the CB Giddy templates. You can get these at CB Giddy. We got a whole bunch of different kinds. I just went with a traditional F-hole. Traced it. 
with a pencil, kind of line it up, got it square and level, three millimeters here, one millimeter here, kept them tight, got the, the, the hogged most of it out with the Dremel and then just took round, round files, put on a nice talk show and just went slow and low. It's coming out pretty good. My OCD can flare up right now. It's looking pretty good right now. I could, I could go with that right now, but I can still see some of my pencil marks. So I might just spend some time here um, going through here, cleaning them up. But that's about it. I have the neck right here drilled. Going through here. Again, just took these bars right here. Stacked them here so these screws have something to screw into right there and right there. And going to a basket weave a warship into a very, very tiny, small hot sauce bottle. Boom. At some point here, oh no, this is, this is gonna be the next, this is gonna be the next challenge is these tuners. Cause you gotta go in, I've never ever installed uh, friction pegs. This is gonna go something like this. I still haven't, I don't wanna put a, a, a screw right here. I'll probably end up, gonna just end up gluing this in here gluing and clamping it but um what I'd like to do this is what I mean by basket weaving because if I ideally what I'd like to do is just screw this in here so you like put him in here like this and then put a screw in here and then pull in the city pull him back but if I do that then I so what I'm thinking about doing is removing this top part right there so I can kind of slide this in here the idea being is I, um, Nick glued his, he glued his down in here on the other page. And that's probably what I'll end up doing. But again, I'm still in that place where I'm kind of tempted to put electronics in it. I don't have to, you know, if the grid goes down uh, and there's no power for whatever reason, <laughs> we're all going to be playing acoustic guitars. So... That's where we are right now. I think after I get this right here, these, these right here, these friction pegs, they're tapered. And that's why I need his book. I'm gonna go to that page next. You have to go in here. See, this is thin right here. And these holes are too small. See, they won't even fit in there. So, you know, right away, this hole's gotta be bigger. But you don't wanna just take a drill, like one drill bit and go all the way through. Like I think he said he uses a 5 16 in there. This part right here where this guy's going to go in, it's got to be fat right here, and this part's going to be um, skinnier. So what I think I might do is just take this right here. Again, I'm going to read, read what he did, so I don't got to reinvent the wheel. But find out what his, what his measurement is, the small one, and use that bit to get it through, and then use the bigger bit from the other side. So I'll use two different drill bits. Then you gotta find something, you can use like a taper, some sort of taper, taper thing. I don't, this might work. This came from Cat and Jack, North Carolina. This is tapered. Small here is getting fat here, so this might work. But this might be too fat. This is just straight all the way through. So we're moving along. Um, it's going faster than I thought it would go. Uh, so I'm gonna take a break. And um, go shepherd the sheep, so to speak. It's easy to get lost down here, especially on the holiday vacations. But we cannot have the children spend all day long playing computer games. So it keeps them quiet for an hour or two. But, you know, if I let those two go, you know, your kids and your grandkids, put them on the computer, dude. They'll, they would sit there for 12 hours straight. Some of them would. My, uh, they would. I could, I could drive to Louisiana and they would complain the whole time. But if I put them on a computer, they would sit, they 15 hours would go by and they, they wouldn't bat an eye. That's not a good thing. It's a tool. And, and I know what they're watching, but um, right, blah, 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 blah. Hyped. We're going to move over here again. I, all right, all right, bye. We gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. Tuner holes. Just follow the book. Two different size drill bits. On one side, you'll have a bigger hole. 
every other one, bigger hole, bigger hole, smaller hole, smaller hole. This is a 5 16 and the other one's a quarter inch. I did go up a little bit to 1764 and then um, just use this taper file that was sent to me from a care package from Captain Jack, uh, North Carolina. He does Civil War reenactments. And I believe he was a, uh, a cannon gunner. Uh, up, up. Down in the notes, I'll have uh, Captain Jack uh, um, make, correct me like uh, what you do here. And the idea being is see how it tapers here. And all really, all really doing, no matter how you do it, is this is tapered. I don't know if you can see it on camera. This is just straight. This is a little fatter here and goes skinnier here. And that's kind of the nature of the tuning, the, uh, <clears throat> the friction peg. So it's been going like this. And then that's just straightforward. That's just straight from the book. Boom. And then in a minute, if I do it on camera, I'm just going to drill a, a 1 16th inch hole in there, and that's where the string's going to go in. And dude, again, these aren't these aren't cheesy like plasticky cheap. This this is like real wood, dude. Look, it's even got some cool inlays in there. So that's cool. If you're gonna build one of these, remember you don't have to build these for yourself, dude. Build them for somebody else. Be a um, be Santa's one of the Santa's little elves, dude. You know, build if you're if you're a puzzle guy, you, like you like building puzzles, or you like building model ships. This is the same thing. What's fun about this, as opposed to model ships that sits on your on your, you know on your um, uh, shelf, this can be used. So that's cool. I, I mean, I'm, I'm hyped about that. I was worried about that. It was two drill bits. Bada bing, bada bow, how you like me now. One, one, one. Uh, change, a bit, change a bit out, other side. Give it a little file. I might clean it up a little bit more, but that's it, dude. Boom, done. Right. If you want that super love, super love feel, CB Giddy does sell the special tapered reamer right there. Stu Mac has that, dude, but it's like $99. I'm not dissing Snoop, Stu Mac. I mean, that's, the, that's those are le the legit luthiers. They got cash like that because they probably got clients that can... But I'm just using just like craftsman, whatever. Just cleaning it out. Boom. Clean it up. All right, we're gonna next someone tried to attach the neck. Show me what you're working with. Going through the book here, dude. Got the box right here. Pulled up all the hardware. Uh, the little hinges here. They are here and here. This works the same way that with cigar box guitars. You just pop these off. They're kind of a pain to pop back in. You can see how they're, those little hooks in there are angled. So there's actually a, a technique to putting these back into the boxes, but it does make it easier. Pop this off. I've moved, I popped these little these little ribs out and push them over here. Now this isn't what he did in this book, but he's just kind of given us like the way he's doing it. And I'm following this roughly because if I didn't have this book right here, I wouldn't know what I'm doing. So the idea being here is these are push being pushed forward. These would ideally, in some way, shape, or form, be like tone bars for bass, according to his book. This right here 
All right. He, when he's doing the, um, the end piece on here, when he's putting the neck on, uh, took the neck, sanded it right here. This, this when you get this, is kind of like, you know, the fretboard is kind of coming off a little bit. So, sand it flush here to here, to this part, to this part. Sand, sand, real simple. Just took a, 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 my DeWalt, Dwight, DeWalt, Dwight, Yoakum, DeWalt. And um, just sand it down. And then I just stained this right here with black cherry. Why? I just grabbed it. You can keep it clean. You can keep the gun stock. You know, there's like a thousand different stains you use. I just grabbed that one and did it in here. This is drying while I'm working on the box. So my dude, Nick, I just want to say La Lancey. I'm going to call him. I'm going to call him Lanciano. If I'm mispronouncing your name, dude, I'm sorry. Nick Lanciano, see right here, the little nug back here? He put that little nug back there to accommodate the, the length he needed. What I sort of decided to do here was, because I just, last night I just found this piece. This piece was a scrap from my wife's grandmother's, she has some like table. This old table you can like, had like little four legs. It was like this, had little four legs here, four legs here, and you could like fold them up and fold them up like this, and it broke through the years. It had this little device here on there, like this. It was like a little screw. Like a little screw in here. And then you could like, you could, this, this was like the little latch that would release it. So I popped him off and then right away I went, ding. This would be a great little nug, that little, he does it in the book. Um, right here, where he's actually notching, he, he's notching the book. You know, you need to get this book. But it's this part right here where he's doing this part. So what I decided to do with this, with the necessity for the, for the nug, is instead of pulling the pulling the guitar backwards this way, I decided to put that nug up front here and then push the neck forward, and then have this. You'll see it later. This is I'm kind of speed talking because I'm kind of like like in my zone right now. So this right here, I ha I whacked this part this part right here off, measured the box, cut, cut, remove this, and this just happened to fit in here, dude. Like I slightly, you know, fasten so you can go in here. So my idea here now is just to take this right here, and I'm going to literally just this would be the length that you need as a opposed to putting it back here. This is going to push it forward more. And then I'm just going to put two screw. I'm going to attach this. I'm going to screw, screw and glue this to this. So this will be a, this will be a section right here. And then I'm going to put a screw here, a simple drywall screw. You know, the hot sauce guitar kitchen loves drywall screws. Put screw here, screw here. And then I just got done sanding this. So I'm going to put some glue on here, maybe. And it's going to screw it together. A la Fender. A la Legos. So if you want to disassemble this, and then this is going to pop on here like this. And so that's going to be my technique for attaching the neck. Also, I want to um, potentially put a pickup in here. So I don't want to glue this together, I don't think. So we'll see. I'm, I'm not there yet. I just want to catch you up with what I'm doing right now. I have got the box ready. Oh, and also this right here, I pulled these forward. So when I put screws in here, when it goes on here like this, when the screws go in through here and here, again, this was just the way it was. Um, the screw will go like this. It'll have something to screw in here, screw in here, maybe put one here so that way. And then if I, if you really want to be whatever, I sanded this down so the glue could make contact, you know, past the um, that. So I might glue it and screw it. We'll see, that's where I'm at though. I'm trying to think ahead, because you know, once you glue this together, um, you're kind of done. I, I'm thinking right now that I'm not going to do, I'm too scared to, the inside here. We'll, we'll get there in a second. That's a great idea. I mean, he's, this is awesome what he's doing here. And I have a, a thing I could do with this if I went that way, because he put screens in there. So I might do something like this as the screening, but, um, as much as I'm not down with F holes, I'm probably going to put an F hole in here. 
because I want because I want to be able to pull the I want to be able to get in here if I put electronics in here or a piezo disc or a piezo rod. I want to be able to get in and out of here to, to mess with it. You can also cut a little uh, uh, access patch here, but we'll see. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm going to put all my tools away. I'm going to get ready to drill the, the screws for this. The neck is drying, and then we'll go into the next phase. Hype, dude. I'm so hyped. So I think I'm, uh, look, the feral, I got something for you, you feral flying pig. Hype. And all this just worked out, dude. This, this, he happened to use his box. I haven't happened to have this box. I was using these boxes for, like I said before, as for uh, license plate guitars. I got these boxes from my dude, Mike Hearn, who's, who uh, I, I'm gonna keep saying his name over and over again because when you get your number one and you got that one cigar box guitar that you just absolutely just love and it's your jam. Um, when my dad died, side note, when my dad passed. Um, I was right next to him when he passed in Reading, Pennsylvania. That weekend was the weekend that um, my dude Mike sold me all his, he sold me like a bunch of boxes. I mean, I had like four giant boxes of cigar boxes that because he kind of like just kind of phased out of it. So this is just one of the ones that just happened to be in there. So, you know, praise Jesus that, you know, I'm seriously, dude, praise Jesus that I got these like three years ago, four years ago, and now I'm right here, so. This whole thing's a blessing. It's, a, it's, a, it's the holiday season, so I'm hyped. Anyways, let's get going. Go, 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 go. Closing in on it. First fiddle. The neck is ready to go. Stained, sanded. I drilled the, the 1 16th uh, bit in there. I hope I put them in the right place. I, you know, I got kind of like nervous there, right here at the very end, out of how you put those in there. The box is drying. I was going to try to not glue the box together, but it just needs to be done. And um, I'll just do an access panel in there if I have to, if, if, if I decide to put a pickup in there. So this is drying. Once the box dries, I'm going to pop off the weights here and then glue this on and then let it glue up and let it dry overnight. And then tomorrow I got this right here set up. Again, all this right here, you got to get this book. I just did what he did. What he said is right here. So, so on the next episode, as I finish up this one right here, this is just again. I can't say enough about this book. I can't say enough about Nick Lanciano. And um, boom, height. And it's really kind of neat in a way because it's really it's it's more simple than you think it is. This right here is just like putting together Legos. You know, just you got to pull some things off, unscrew, screw things in. This thing right here, uh, and then um, this was this wasn't as challenging as I thought it was going to be. You just got to kind of slow down, go slow and low. Remember, I'm a motor mouth speed talker. My dad called me motor mouth, not motor head, motor mouth. So I'm always trying to encourage myself to go slow and low. Remember, no venom. Slow and low. Remember, watch and pray. I'm gonna say that over and over again. I need, I need to remind myself. I, I have that all around here because, even in the in the you know the course of these days, or whatever, it's just like it's it's hard to get off off focus here. And then, uh, so anyways, watch and pray. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. All right, that's it. Hot sauce cigar box guitar kitchen. Uh, I think I can do this all in part two. If not, this would be part three, and then there'll be a, the final one of just it all being assembled, so. All right. Let the glue dry 24 hours. Did you dig it? Keep oil in your lamps, my friends. Watch and pray. And I'm also listening to the podcast, Unashamed. With Phil and Jace Robertson and Alan, and there's a cool story we're gonna get into later. I can't do, I can't go into the story right now because we because time is the essence. We want to get this. It'd be nice if I get this violin built by Christmas. So, um, but I am listening to this podcast as I build this fiddle. Because I, the hot sauce guitar kitchen is. Hello.
low-tech man in a high-tech world. Peace.